Hey, hello everyone, Pally Tom here. Welcome back to the Bam Bam playthrough. No, you do not need to adjust your monitor or phone, depending on where you're watching. We are indeed wearing a helmet. This is the Black Dumpling. <laughs> I gotta admit, it's not the most intimidating helmet I've ever seen, and the name could use a little work. But I have been farming this thing for, oh God, it feels like two hours now. I looked on the wiki, it has an extremely low drop rate of 0.5%, but I do like to take drop rates with a grain of salt. So when I saw that, I was like, hey, it can't be that bad. I'll just get in here and get lucky. It'll be fine. Well, it wasn't fine. I farmed this forever. I've spent so much good recording time tonight farming this. Ah, oh, I'm gonna die. Just farming this helmet. And it was off these enemies here. In the Volcano Manor, this darkened room, this is where it comes from. And it only comes from the dudes, supposedly, I think. I can't, I haven't, I can't test this. I'm not gonna sit here and just beat up these old guys that are tied to chairs. But I'm pretty sure it only comes from the enemies that are wearing the hood itself. So for instance, that guy that was tied up that they're using as an alarm clock, I don't think we would get any value out of killing them. There are some upstairs we can farm. I'm pretty sure they don't drop the helmet. So yeah, basically I've been doing this run forever. I have 147,000 souls, but finally got the hat to drop as we pressed record. Uh, I'm going to see my family very soon, and we're trying to get some content done before we leave. And uh, this was uh, frustrating to farm a super rare item right before then. If you guys have ever farmed this and you had better luck than me, sound off in the comments. This thing might be the rarest thing I've ever gotten in Elden Ring. Uh, which is kind of funny, because on the seamless co-op playthrough we did on Holly's channel, I just had this thing sitting around. We just, we just had it. That's how it goes, though. It's Brass Shield 2.0 all over again. So why is this significant? Well, let's read the description. Mask forced on victim's head to lend torture an extra degree of cruelty. It magnifies one's fears and makes them acutely aware of all forms of pain. Raises attack power when wearers suffer madness. This is a 10% damage increase that we can stack on top of everything else we've been doing. We are going to proc this effect with the Flame of Frenzy Madness spell that we picked up in episode one. I told you we'd be using it. It just took you know, a couple weeks. So if I cast this, uh, you can see that bar starting to fill up. If we push it too far, we become mad, we lose mana, we take damage but then deal 10% more. That, of course, stacks on top of our Physic, our Exalted Flesh, our uh, Golden Vow that we cast with our Dagger. This should help out quite a lot. I'm gonna get out of here now, I hate this place. Now, we needed this helmet because we're starting to go against some pretty big bosses in the mid to late game. And, well, I'm only like, what level are we, actually? I'm only level 53. So we need to punch way above our weight class. Now that being said, I can level up and I'm definitely going to. Guess where all these levels are going? <laughs> 59 strength, beautiful. We can find a whetstone inside the Stormvale Castle that is going to give us even more damage with our strength-based weapons. All I have to do is remember how to get to that. Oh yeah, we have an elevator. Right over here across the lobby. I unlocked this running around the castle earlier. If you don't have it, you could just jump down to the lower grounds like we were doing before, but this leads me directly to where I was trying to go. Now that guy over there is a mother trucker. I don't necessarily want to mess with him, even though we hit super hard. He, it, their fighting is so erratic that I don't know if that would just go good for me. I don't know if that's the right thing. Is what I'm looking for on the other side of him though? Because if I have to go close to him, that's gonna suck. No, this is it right here. This is it. Uh, we got a stone sword key in the last episode as well. So we're gonna put that in that dragon's forehead, walk right in here, make sure this guy doesn't get up too fast. <laughs> that feels pretty good to one shot these dudes. Even though they're not super high level, I still like it. And then somewhere in here, it's not that. It's not that. I don't even know how to say that word. There it is, the iron wet blade. Let me show you what we're gonna do with this. 
If we sit down at this bonfire, we can adjust our ashes of war. We did this to the large club earlier to give it determination. But now we're going to keep determination, but change the affinity of the weapon to be heavy. Look at the change we can see on this already. We go from B scaling to A scaling. That means for every point of strength that we have, we are going to see a bigger payout. And the physical damage is increasing at the same time. You love to see that. We're in the very far west of Lyernia of the Lakes, just south of an encampment here that you can see Quite a few guards are residing inside. What we're after though, is guarded by these red jellyfish. This, I think, only happens at night, or maybe you only see the red jellyfish here at night, but they're the easiest marker if you want to see it. I don't know if the item's here all the time, but I don't think they're gonna like that I'm picking it up. So let's move through here relatively quickly. What we are going to find in this broken cart is the jellyfish shield. And we need to do some cool, whoa, I thought that was a wolf. We need to do some quick testing to see if it's gonna be something that we want to use. I'll show you how we're gonna do that. This is the shield in question. Blocks 100% physical damage here on the stat screen, but if we read the description, it says it provides absolutely no protection from piercing attacks. So, which one is it? I don't actually know. Uh, I need two dexterity to wield this thing. I know, it's a crazy stat. I've never put any points into it at all. But dexterity does actually provide uses for our character. While it won't actually be scaling our damage much, what it will do is increase the speed of all of our actions, including our movement speed, by the way. So, Getting off our charged attacks is actually going to be easier if we have higher dexterity. All right, now this is how we're going to see if this item works for our build. You can see my right armament one at the top right of the screen is going to deal 552 damage. Well, the jellyfish shield, well, that looks so cool, actually comes with a weapon art of its own. If we use it, we get contagious fury, and you can see the effect kick in. I actually thought it would give me glowing eyes as well. Now, I've heard that if I put this away, we lose the effect. And that looks to be exactly the case. So if I was gonna one hand my weapon, this could be something we could use. But because we're putting this away, let me go ahead and check my status. It did go up a little bit, but when we put it away, everything resets back to normal. Even though it's still on my back. So, um, yeah, can't, can't use that. Another thing it might be time to upgrade is our physic. For the majority of the game so far, we've been running the spiked cracked tier, as well as the strength not crystal tier. And in the early game, both of these were essential for us really powering over a lot of the bosses. However, the strength increase is arguably gonna be less and less effective the higher we get our strength. And we're already looking at 59 strength unbuffed right now. So let's get another physic. Let's get another tier to put in our physic more accurately. We're in Kaelid on the northern side and I'm heading east as far as I can go. When you start to see these dragons all over the place, you know you're starting to get warm. Hey, big guy. I'm not here for you yet, don't you worry. <laughs> this is one of the dragons that in the past uh, we've taken down right at the start of the game, like as a samurai, we just go in and bleed him to death because he can't move. And if you use a pickled foul foot, you can actually get like 150,000 souls or something, something ridiculous, maybe like 130, right at the beginning of the game, which is a huge bonus. However, that's not what we're after. Why am I bleeding? What's that? We're gonna head towards this minor Erd tree just north of that bonfire. It's on the far eastern side of Kaled, specifically in the Dragon Burrow region. Uh, down beneath us is another one of the tree guardians, but come to think of it, we haven't really fought too many of these. It's the same enemy that met us in the middle of the capital yesterday. Uh, I don't know what this guy's aggro range is or like where I need to buff to fight him. We're gonna start things off by trying to take 
him down. Our new opener is going to be Madness, followed by Madness. There we go, perf. Oh, I didn't put the helmet on. Oh, I'm, oh I took it off. Ah, reset. We're gonna look for him over here on the left before I do my buffs. Just to see if we could spot him. I swear he was, oh, there he is. He's over there. He's over there. Yeah, and he doesn't know we're here yet. That's perfect. Okay, perfect. So, uh, let's get mad. Two casts of this should do it. Perfect. Then we're going to physic. Uh, low health. I didn't get low enough health. Oh, no. This is sloppy. This is sloppy. One more. Okay, that's red tear stone. Exalted flesh. Mana potion. Golden vow. Two hand our weapon. Determination. And see if we can get a hit in before this guy just straight up kills me. Whoa, we may have been able to do that from stealth. Well, 3,000 damage to start things off is pretty good. Hmm. Yep, that's Scarlet Rot. That is instantaneous Scarlet Rot. Oh shit! Uh, horse! Fuck! <laughs> Wait, I did what? <laughs> no! Uh, we're just going to mount up immediately and try our best to. <laughs> Determination! Let's go. I want to go for the double power attack, but if this guy hits me with a jump attack while I'm charging this up, like right now, I think I'm dead. I couldn't horse mount in time. So that means I'm not going to be able to burst him down. I'm actually going to have to survive mechanics. I'm going to uh, try a different strategy this time. Only on the first attack, I'm gonna go for a double heavy, a fully charged R2, and then just tap R2 and get a quick heavy off. Uh, I don't think I'll have the room throughout most of the fight to do that. However, if I can get two really good hits at the start of the fight in, that would be way more beneficial than getting those same hits in later because uh, we still have our buffs. So just something like that, nothing too crazy. Oh God. That was lucky. Maybe I could stagger this guy. That was close. Mount up. We dodged the poison with that. Will it be enough to get away? Literally pixels is all I got away with. Uh, since he's doing this range stuff, we're gonna head to the cliff. Just sit down. No reason to be scared. Let's get a visual of the boss though. More mystical bullshit coming my way. Buff. Here's the swing. Going for mine. Still 2,500, not bad. Determination again. I am so lucky. Jump attack, because I'm so lucky. Roll away, this is a double. Jump attack again. Uh, this is staff to ground. Okay. We're going to have to get distance and just keep sprinting. Hopefully in a semicircle around the boss makes our job a little bit easier. Determination. Oh, I got it. Oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. I don't know if I was joking about it being attempt number 50, 47, whatever I said. Uh, we're an hour and 20 minutes into this recording. <laughs> oh God, man, but we got it, but we got it. It was worth it. I'm gonna pick up my pride and ride out of here. Oh, finally back into some sunshine, look. At that, I really do think this zone is, in particular, is just breathtaking. It's so pretty. Hey, we're back in Lyernia of the Lakes. We're at the main academy gate. We teleported up here when we gained access to the academy with that key the dragon was protecting. Instead of going into the academy, we're going to head southeast and head down this very large ramp. We did this in the hero playthrough as well, so if this is looking familiar to you, that is why. However, I was a little worried about these guys on the way down, but we smashed that out, no problem. The reason we're making our way here is because there is a vendor who for some reason can't figure out why he's not getting any business. I think I might have an idea. And right past those hoons is this guy. Oh, 
There's been an age since I've seen a customer. Melody. You don't say. You don't say. We are here to buy one thing in particular, and that is the Fever's Cookbook. If we make this, it will allow us to create sporific grease, drawstring grease, arrows, and bolts. All of these will put our target to sleep. Do I want to enchant the stick, though? Yeah, maybe we'll give it a try. Have a safe journey. Thank you, friend. I don't think we're going to be adding up status too quick. Yeah, maybe it's a bad idea. If you have an arcane scaling weapon, like an S scaling weapon, I think this is the way to go. Uh, I might be able to come up with a better idea. We are back in Limgrave on the eastern side, southeast of the Summon Water Village outskirts. We're here because I think I can drop down to a ledge beneath us, although it is kind of looking a little more sketchy than I had hoped. Uh, this should be fine, I think. Oh no, we fell a long way. All right, I just went a little further to the south and I think, yes, nice, easy ramp to get down here. No need for instantaneous death when we hit the floor. A lot of these grave sites simply house golden runes that you can use to get more currency, get more souls, just like this. However, this one in particular is a little different. This corpse sitting on top of this is holding another familiar cookbook. It is the first version of the one we just picked up. And inside of this cookbook, we can now make these sleep pots. I have four cracked pots right now. We've gotten them just from vendors and stuff around the area. Where do I need to go to to get mushrooms? They're just kind of around, right? To farm the mushrooms we need, we're gonna go to Lyurnia of the Lakes. I believe if we just kind of follow this path through the canyon, we should find quite a few mushrooms along the way if I don't get poisoned and die. <laughs> There's also some of Trina's lilies in this valley. Now those do not respawn. Those are a limited resource in the game. However, the mushrooms, all you have to do is sit down at this bonfire. Now, let me make sure I showed you where we are on the map. I can't remember if I did in combat. Hold on just a moment, please. If we travel down this ravine and collect all the mushrooms, we can sit here and then travel up the ravine and collect all of the mushrooms and just keep going back and forth until we feel like we have enough. There's actually quite a few just sitting, or at least two sitting right here by the bonfire. That might be even faster if you just collect those. I did so much crafting and so much collecting in our hero playthrough. Uh, I'm not trying to collect too much right now. However, because we have this, I feel relatively confident going to fight a very difficult boss. Inside of the Volcano Manor yet again, going to the left on the shortcut that we opened up in the previous video. We saw this archway leading into the church last time, but I dare not step inside because I know who lives in there. If that guy hits me once, I'm gonna die. Bro, if this guy hits me once, I'm gonna die, much less the boss inside. <laughs> Uh, never gets old sending people flying. However, with the power that we have gained today, maybe, just maybe, we can do this. I hope these things don't take mana to throw or anything weird like that because I don't think I'll be able to support it. But here goes, ready and willing. Right down the middle. Let's see if we can put this, fuck. Well, it worked. Nice. <laughs> that was a good throw, too. Okay, fully buffed. Through the door we go. I believe the boss will just be here this time. Yes, indeed. That's going to make my throw much harder to do. I didn't think that would land. It was very short. But does the powder stick around? Here, that's my actual throw. It does connect, but the boss didn't stay in it long enough. One more time. This is it. Was that enough? There we go. Okay, determination. Big swing, here we go, to the belly of the beast. Follow it up. Nice. Determination, do it again. Oh, I'm out of mana. I think they did take mana. Oh no, they did take mana. Oh God. 
Okay, I crafted more of the sleep bombs, and I also gave myself one more mana potion. In hindsight, I should just give myself like six mana potions, because it's not like I can ever actually heal myself, but yeah, we'll make it work. All right, big buffs on the way in. Let's just chuck that. Oh no, I ate, I ate two pieces of meat. My bad. Is that close enough? I don't know, bro. That looked pretty close. Okay, it was close enough. Two hand, determination. Here we go. Big hit. Follow it up. Oh my God, yes. Can I put him to sleep again? How amazing would that be? Oh, that would be so good if I could just put. Oh, oh yeah. Okay, mana potion. Determination. Hit him hard. Cycle back to the sleep potion. Hit him hard. Oh my God. Sleep potion. Run, 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 run. Can you do that or are you going to go back to sleep? <laughs> oh my God, yes. Oh God, it's so satisfying. It's so satisfying. Well, team, that's going to do it for today's episode. This took an ungodly amount of time. However, this opens up the way for us to get a better version of determination. And if that's not enough to entice you to come back and subscribe to this channel, then I don't know what could be. Thank you for being here, guys. In all seriousness, I'm working my ass off. I hope it shows. I'll see you guys again soon.